Hello, this is Angela with Parkos Permaculture, and today I want to talk about one of my favorite September crops, which is the black elderberry, Sambucus nigra. So we're standing in the shade garden. This garden's gone through many different iterations. It's very small. I only have one quarter acre here in zone 8B. And this is this little section um, between my neighbor's fence and my house. You can see it's quite narrow. And this area is really shady and the ground here was really poorly draining. There's not a good slope like there is in my other side yard garden. So this area is really wet in the winter and I've done a lot to build up the soil and to work on improving drainage, but it's still just a really wet area. So initially this was an area where I focused on planting natives because so many Pacific Northwest natives do well in shade and with wet feet. So. I started out planting salal and red huckleberry, thimbleberry, black cap raspberry. I put in natives like Dicentra formosa, which are beautiful and while not edible, an important part of this garden. So over time, what I found was that I really needed to add more than just natives to this part of the garden. So I sort of call it a woodland garden. Now there's no dominant large woodland trees, but I do have two black elders and they are the predominant shrub in this part of the garden. I've added lots of other non-natives like hostas and bear's breeches and hellebores um, and more natives like palmate coltsfoot, which is edible and um, just really mixed in oak oh, camas. There's camas over here. I have also checker lilies, not edible, but they are beautiful native. So I have this big mix of plants. It has sort of a woodland aesthetic. It's shady, it's cool, it's moist under here, but it's not strictly natives anymore. And obviously with these two large elder shrubs, the main fixtures of this part of the garden are not native. Now in the Pacific Northwest, the blue elder, Sambucus cerulea, which is sometimes called a uh, subspecies of Sambucus nigra, it depends on where you read whether it's its own separate species or it's a subspecies of this plant here behind me, is way too large for this space. Now I had a blue elder in a different part of the garden and unfortunately it came from the nursery with cane borer and elder cane borer and died very quickly and I have not replaced it since then, but I've been thinking about it because I actually really prefer the blue elder in terms of harvestability, in terms of flavor of the berries, but it is much larger. So I didn't have room for it in this little small section here. So in this part of the garden, I have two Sambucus nigra, which are the European black elder. I have a Nova and a York which are two of the most commercially um, available varieties because they are so reliable and they produce so well. So let me share a little bit about how I grow these and how I care for them because an elder isn't right for every space, uh, but I do think that many, many home gardeners can grow elderberries and they're such an important medicinal and food crop. So you can see here that elderberries grow in a hand kind of shape. Now I've harvested most of my elders, so we're just kind of down at the tail end of the crop here. But by tail end, I mean there's probably still 20 pounds of them hanging out. You do want to make sure that you harvest them during the harvest period before they start to get dried out. They can get fruit flies toward the end, just like grapes can or anything else. So you want to be aware of when that good harvest period is, when they're nice and black and plump. What you don't want is to harvest them too early. Let me see if I can find one. When the berries are still green. So here we have a ripe and an unripe. So this green one, you don't want to pick them when they're like that. This black one, that's how they want to look. And elderberries are very juicy and stainy. So when you pick them green, they have a lot more of the cyanogenic glycosides in them. They'll give you a pretty nasty upset stomach. You don't want to eat the seeds when they're raw. You don't want to eat any of the stems. So I've uh, done a video on making uh, elder flower syrup and it's the same way. Any of these little stems here, these puppies right here, they contain cyanogenic glycosides and they can make you pretty sick. So with elderberry, as with many, many plants, preparation is key to edibility. So you want to pick the elderberries when they're dark purple, no green berries left, when they're still nice and plump before they start to shrivel and have issues with fruit flies. 
and you want to pick the whole hand. I'll show you here. So you wanna pick the whole hand of elderberries like this. Look at these puppies, they're beautiful. And then what I do is I actually plunk them on jelly roll pans and I put them in the freezer. And once they're frozen, the berries knock off very easily with a fork. You can also do it when they're fresh. It's just uh, really stainy and the juice gets everywhere, but I found a fork is the most useful tool for removing all of these little berries from the stems. You wanna discard every bit of stem. You don't wanna cook that. You just wanna make your elderberry syrup or jam or pie with the fruit itself. So September is kind of the romanticized notion of late summer, early fall. And in a lot of kind of pastoral imagery, you see folks gleaning elderberries in the hedgerow, harvesting those elderberries here in mid-September-ish. So they are a really great kind of transitional crop between summer and autumn. And folks here in the Pacific Northwest love to make elderberry syrup. I make elderberry syrup and um, folks use it as a health tonic or a cold preventive, but it also is just really delicious. It's really nutritious and tasty and really good on pancakes or pound cake, what have you, on waffles. And I also make jam with it as well. I know a lot of folks really like elderberry pie. Uh, my kids aren't wild about it in a pie, but um, it, it is something that is traditionally cooked into a pie. So you can also dry your elderberries and preserve them that way and make elderberry syrup later in the year from the dried berries. They dry quite nicely. So when growing elderberries, they do well in partial shade. Mine are huge. If I had it to do over again, I probably wouldn't put them here as they are too big for the space and they take really heavy yearly pruning to keep them from creeping over too far into my neighbor's property or rubbing against my house. Elderberries are not a tree, they are a shrub. They do best as a multi-trunked plant that you prune diligently. Wood that is older than three to four years, I come in and remove it at the base of the plant. And that means that I'm encouraging the production of new shoots from the base. As the larger canes of elder get uh, old and kind of over mature after they get three or four years old, their fruit production starts to decrease. So it's really important that to keep the plant reinvigorated every autumn or winter, I come in and I remove all of the very oldest wood. Now, Along with the fruit, the wood itself contains cyanogenic glycosides and the roots contain tons of them. So please don't, for any reason, think that it's okay to consume other parts of this plant besides the berries. It's really important that you don't consume other parts of the plant. There are other uses to the wood, but I find that um, one, you can't burn it in your fireplace, and two, it decomposes really quickly because it is very soft wood. And so mostly what I do for it is, or do with it, excuse me, is just chop it up and throw it back as compost on the bed. So how do you know if elderberries will work in your garden? How do you know if they are a crop that's appropriate for you? Well, I would encourage you first to try elderberries. So I speak a fair amount on this channel about how you should grow things that you enjoy eating. So elderberries can be a little bit of a strong and unusual flavor, especially for Americans, we are not accustomed to that flavor in our diet. So I would encourage you to taste them before you plant them. Now, elderberries require partial shade to full sun. I have found mine do very well here in partial shade. They tolerate a wide range of soils. I have very clay acid soil and they do fantastically well here. You do need two different varieties in order to get fruit. That's why I have a Nova and a York. So there can be quite a bit of variation of uh, flavor and size of fruit across varieties. And if you are growing elderberries from seed, there is a huge amount of genetic diversity. So just be aware if you're planting seeds and going that route, that you may get a, a ridiculous range of potential flavors and yields, and they may or may not be super palatable. So for me, I would stick with named cultivars, unless I was planning on trying to produce my own new varieties and could plant out, you know, hundreds of seeds and select from there which there are people doing that with elderberries, trying to improve the named varieties. So for me, Nova and York, I got these at One Green World Nursery here in Portland, and they do grow very well from cuttings. So I will do a video on that in the future about how to root cuttings in order to propagate your elderberries. But when you're growing them, as I said before, they do best as a multi-trunked uh, shrub. 
where you come in and remove the oldest wood every year. Any wood that's more than four years old, it needs to go. So when growing elderberries, I think it's really important to note that the catalog may say they top out at eight feet. They can get up to 20 feet and pruning is key. One thing that's important to note when you prune an elder is that they are a shrub and they can be kind of unattractive. My highbush cranberry is the same way. When you prune the leader here, you get the plant sending out these really horizontal shoots like this. So you find that it's not as attractive as pruning a tree. You get these kind of awkward angles when you prune an elderberry. So you wanna just be aware if you are pruning for looks, folks often cut them off at the ground level versus pruning them higher up. You get these kind of weird angles going on. For me, because mine are grown for fruit production and to kind of keep them at the height that I want and they're not in my front yard, I don't worry about that as much. Now, pests and diseases for elders. For me, I found that the two big ones are elder cane borer and black aphids. I found the black aphids don't in any way reduce the yield that I get, so they don't trouble me very much at all. And I find that within two weeks of aphids moving in, I have a whole bunch of ladybug larvae all over. So I get the ladybugs naturally following as the appropriate predator, and they control my aphids really well on both of my elders here. Now, each elder can produce between 5 and 25 pounds of fruit per shrub, so you just want to be aware when you're planting them to plant an appropriate amount. At maturity, they can produce a whole lot. It's hard for most people to use 25 pounds of elderberries unless you're sharing them with friends, which is a great idea. So thanks for watching today. I have to run and take my husband to an appointment. So I will be back more soon with more great, wonderful, beautiful things happening in the fall garden. Lots and lots ahead in the next several weeks. I love the autumn harvest. When I'm getting discouraged, like I talked about in my last video, like just really frustrated and fed up with the garden, there are so many good things to look forward to still in autumn. I'm excited for the upcoming quince harvest, harvesting all my pumpkins. I'm excited to make some changes over the fall and winter, some big changes. I'm gonna be moving some trees. So there's lots to look forward to. It's a wonderful mix of like, I can be frustrated with some things and also just really enjoying and appreciating so many things about the garden like my elderberry harvest so i will be making elderberry syrup with a bunch of these and freezing a bunch to enjoy later in the winter i hope you all are staying safe and taking care of yourselves if you enjoyed this video you can check out my patreon down in the description if you'd like to support this channel and i also have a paypal if you want to just throw a couple of bucks to say thanks for the work that you do i'll be back